Hi there and welcome to Hearthside. My name is Michelle. I'm the author on this blog and my most recent post here is about heathen art. So recently I made a painting that's heathen themed and I was talking about it with my tribe as well as arts more generally within heathenry. Um, both historic art and modern art and just some of the trends that I noticed. Um, some of these are a bit simplified and I'll get into that in a minute. Um, this is not going to be exactly the same as my blog entry for the reason that I make these videos to be accessible to people who might have trouble reading my blog for whatever reason, whether it's time constraints or maybe a visual impairment. Due to the nature of this particular blog where there's lots of visual elements, the video will be a bit longer and not quite the same content just because it wasn't feasible. I will try to put up some of the images on the screen that I'm talking about in the video. I don't actually know how to do that, so I'm going to figure it out, hopefully. But that's the plan. Um, so that's where we're at. I don't know how helpful that will be to have the images for certain people depending on why you're watching this video, but we're going to give it a try and I'll describe whatever we're talking about as well just so that hopefully that helps everyone. Alright, so I was looking first at historic heathen art and what I noticed about that is, well we don't really know a lot we don't know, for example, what the intent of the original maker was. Was their art a devotional act? Was it a way to make profit? We don't even for sure know what is heathen art in some cases. Um, a good example of that are some of the different jewelry and stuff which is believed to be images of Freya, but as many scholars have pointed out, it could just be images of a woman. There's one particular piece of art that I've heard described that has a gold necklace that they think is Freya, but again, even though that's the most clear possible link to it, one being Freya, no one's quite sure. Um, the problem with art is quite often, unless there was text along with it, then it's difficult to know who or what is being depicted unless there's some sort of signifying feature, for example, Odin having, having one eye, etc, etc. Um, the example that I am going to give here is the Freyr sculpture, which is from Sweden and it has a big phallus, so that is usually thought to be Freya and there doesn't seem to be as much doubt about that as some of the images of Freya. So that's something that I noticed. And then again, there's all the different rune stones and stuff that are found and they're more of historical records, whether they were meant to be religious. It's hard to say because of the way that heathenry was viewed back then, which is that it was not really separate from anything else in your everyday life, whereas we separated out a little bit more in modern times than they would have. Uh, yeah, so that's what I'm noticing historically. And then as we're moving forward into modern times, there's a few different ways that heathen art is created. Um, the two main ways the first one would be what I would call historically inspired art. So this is art that's either trying to recreate a specific art piece historically or it's trying to recreate an image using the same techniques and elements that a historic art piece might have. So this is where it gets into the complicated territory that I was talking about. Um, I gave some examples. There's this one that is an image of the Allfather by um, Lorna from Angle's Daughter Art. And she 
made this image of the All Father. Obviously, it's using a historical style, but in a modern time, and not copying any particular image. Um, so this is a what I would call historically inspired art, but to say that it's just historically inspired and that it didn't mean anything to her when she was creating it, that is not the case. The second type of art that I was talking about was devotional art, and I don't say I don't think that devotional art is separate from historically inspired art, but there is some art that I would describe as devotional art that is not historically inspired. Um, so I just want to give a little bit of a disclaimer here, which is I am not trying to monetize. I'm going to use some images from current artists. These are all artists that I respect and whose work I think is really good. And I am going to include the links to either their pages or their shops below so that you can go check them out. I think that their work is great. Um, so if we're looking at devotional art, a couple examples I gave. One is an image of Sigyn, and it's in a modern style, and the artist is a woman named Annette. She's got a Etsy shop that you can check out, and she does a lot of different Norse-inspired images that are of single de deities or a couple deities in one picture. Um, and she doesn't just do the Norse pantheon, also a couple others. But I would co call that more of a devotional art in that it focuses on a specific character. So what I'm characterizing devotional art is is having either a single deity in it or an image of a story from the lore. Another example that I gave was this image of Sif, which is by Anna Novikova. And again, it's a modern style with the historical deity or the heathen deity, I should say, I guess. I wouldn't consider them historical. Some people would. I'm not sure if Anna Novikova is heathen or not. Um, I don't know a lot about her. She does have a gallery. I don't know where you can buy her art. Otherwise, I would definitely own some of her art already. But I will link the gallery below. So the devotional art that I'm talking about in this case is modern takes on deities and not historically inspired in the design. That said, I would say that most of the art is devotional art of some sort. The other example that I gave in my blog was Chris from Gungnir's God Post and his God Post, and I gave an example of a historic God Post and then some of his work with Heimdall in particular. It's historically inspired, but again, I would say it's probably also devotional art. It's just I'm making the distinction in this instance that some art is historically inspired and some of it's is just sort of devotional and modern. Um, those are the two main types of art that I'm seeing available on the market for sale or available in Google Images that creators have put up. There isn't a lot that is on concepts in heathenry or holidays for heathenry. The, exam the exception being Yule, there are quite a few Yule images. Um, so this is just a trend that I'm noticing. Now, what is the reason for this? Is it that that's what sells? Is it just what people are comfortable sharing? Or are these the only kinds of art that are really being created in heathenry at the moment? I'm not really sure. Um, I was lucky enough to have a bit of a discourse with Lorna from Angle's Daughter Arts um, about this 
vlog after I posted it. She saw that I had posted some of her work and was thanking me for sharing it. And I was really excited to talk to her because she was talking a little bit about her process with me and what that looked like. Um, so her art, I would describe, is also as devotional. And the same with Chris from Gung Near God posts, from what I've heard when he's talked at uh, Heathen Women United Conference, for example. So their work is devotional. They are heathen or pagan. And um, so that is their inspiration for their art. Lorna was telling me that um, she also does something that I do when I'm creating some of my art, which is when listening to a talk about a heathen related subject she might be sketching at the same time and that is part of where her ideas come from and this was something that I was noticing about the way that I create my own art so most of the art that I create would be probably fall into the devotional category or historically inspired art but I also noticed that another kind of art that I was creating was this art that was me trying to process an idea, basically. So an example that I gave was a dream that I had that had Fenrir as an element, and then I created an art piece sort of to work through that in my head. And another example that I gave was an image that I created of Ocean Keltoy while listening to one of his YouTube videos. Um, just because I find sometimes when I'm listening to a podcast or to someone on YouTube talking about a complex topic that it helps me just to be doing art, to be drawing or sketching something just to keep my attention while I'm listening. Um, it doesn't necessarily mean it will be on the topic of whatever they're discussing. In this case, it was an image of Ocean himself because he was on the screen and it was a sort of a realism image with also the character that he has from his avatar originally um, in front of it. So semi-realistic. It wasn't super detailed. I would definitely done more detailed art in some cases that was realism, but this was just the amount of detail that I put in at that particular time when I was listening to whatever talk. I don't even know which one of his videos this was from, but um, something that I definitely do when there's a complex topic that's being discussed just to help keep me focused while I'm listening and make sure that I'm internalizing some of that and working it through in my head. So I was very interested to hear that Lorna also has a similar process and she was telling me about listening to a talk about Yord in, in particular and sketching at the same time about what was being discussed. So that was really neat just to see that there was that parallel and I'm wondering if anyone else does the same thing. Yeah, so that's really cool because that was something that, I don't know if that's just the sort of art that people don't share because it sort of feels unfinished or too personal or something. Um, do, are there other heathens that are creating this sort of art? And I'm not sure in Lorna's case if this was an art piece that ended up turning into one of the works that she's put on her Etsy shop, for example, but I could see it inspiring, especially if you're talking about a specific deity inspiring some sort of devotional art piece that you might, that you might be sharing. But in my case, it wasn't always on a specific deity. It was more on a concept. And that's where I really want to get to in this entry, in this blog, and in this video is that what seems to be missing in heathen art today is art that's beyond being devotional. 
So even the historical stuff, I would say it's also probably devotional in most cases, or else it's a replication. And then if it's a replication, is it done by a heathen artist or a pagan artist? Or is it being created by someone else who just is interested in the history, for example? So then is it a devotional act? I'm not sure. And also, what is their purpose for creating it if it's a reproduction? Is it simply because it sells to a wider audience? Is it because that's something that interests them learning that style and like making an exact rec replica would be a way to learn more about that style? And where are they coming from with that? Is it an archaeological perspective? Is it a uh, heathen perspective? Is it both? So that particular instance, I didn't include any art that is that, but you can find tons if you're looking on Etsy, if you're looking on Google, that would fit that bill. So I didn't include any of that particular art because I don't know, for example, if those people creating it are heathen or pagan and didn't want to include it right in my blog when I really want to showcase different artists who are heathen and pagan and their work and encourage people to check them out and these are just a few of the different artists whose work I enjoy. Um, but yeah most art that is heathen seems to be devotional in some sense whether or not it's historically inspired. Um, but is there a market for art that goes beyond being this devotional art and why isn't it being created or why isn't it being shared if it is being created and it made me really think about what is heathen art so for me I would say arguably any of my art is heathen just because I'm a heathen and it's influenced by my worldview. So I gave this example of these trees here that I created. Um, it's just a picture that I sketched. I think I was out camping at the time and just the trees that were around me. And I would argue that's a heathen piece of art even though it's not inherently heathen if you just look at it like anyone could relate to a picture about trees. But it was inspired by my worldview and my relationship with the natural world. Um, so is this something that you would consider to be a heathen art piece? If you were creating art yourself, would you consider all of your art to be heathen or only devotional art or art that is about a heathen concept? So I wanted to do something different when I created my art piece and in this case I created an oil painting. Um, the concept that I wanted to depict is the concept of Orolog and just very simply for those of you who are not familiar with this term, Orolog is the concept of our actions and deeds as well as those of our ancestors and how they affect our experience in the present. Um, also how what we do now will will affect our descendants. Um, and what interests me and that I was showing in my painting is that Orlog is not just personal, it's also, there's also Orlog at the community level. And I sh was showing this by having the trees in my painting. So there's three trees in my painting and each one has a face and when I think about trees I think about their mycelium networks which are where the roots join and they can communicate with each other this way so to me the roots are also what connect communities and the ties that we have the frith bonds and the shared history so it made sense to me to depict people as trees for the concept of Orlog. Also in my painting I am depicting the seasons and with the three trees it sort of 
fading across the top through the different seasons. It's starting with a blossoming tree on the one side and then it goes to full green foliage and then yellow, orange, red, and then to the bare tree that's got snow on it. Um, the seasons for me were the passage of time, the year's cycles, and you can also see this reflected in the background behind the trees as to what is on the ground in the forest. And then I was talking about Oralog because I feel like it is very time bound. So the roots represent the past. And this is how our community is connected through common history and how we're connected to the past. So if you look at the bottom, there is water representing the three wells beneath Yggdrasil and them being associated with memory. And just above that, nestled among the roots, there's these sort of bluish faces. And these represent ancestors within the root system of the trees. Then we move on to the stalks of the trees, or the trunks. And these represent the present. And in the stalks, there's these faces of the different people, one on each tree. And so this represents the community in the present time. And then among the trees, there are three wisps. And these represent other beings that we also interact with in the present. And then if we look up at the top of the tree, this represents the future, the leaves and the buds. So at the top of the painting, leaves and buds represent the future and descendants. Around the center tree, there are fireflies flying, and these represent hopes and aspirations for the future. But of course, we cannot know the future ourselves or fully influence it. So we're just trying to live our best lives in the present to make the future more promising. The other aspects that are in this painting is the whole background is kind of black. There are kind of tree trunks that are faded into the distance behind, but they're very faint and difficult to see. There is a moon up above the snow-covered tree. So this is taking place at night. However, there are two sort of rectangular windows that are up in the tree branches, and these open onto other worlds that are daylit worlds. And from these two windows, there are streams of light coming down among the trees. So the aspects of day and night in this are about us not always being able to know the path we're on, but also having the light streaming down that touches us, giving us inspiration for our growth and in this case, I'm using these windows to represent the touch of the divine in our lives. So these are all aspects that I think relate to the concept of Orlog. I hope that you enjoy it. Um, and I think that um, we're not doing enough art like this where we're addressing concepts and what I was discussing in my blog about this is when I'm creating a blog, I always try to find an image to put on my blog. And I try not to use other artists' work because it's not really fair that I'm using their work. I, my blog is not monetized, neither is my YouTube. I'm just doing this because this is the content that I want to see. Um, and I wanted to create more uh, female-driven content that's heathen, but I am not monetizing this, so I can't really use other people's art and then give them a share of my profit or whatever because I'm not making one, and I don't want to assume that I can use people's art, and it's... I'm usually posting things rather quickly, so waiting for permission is difficult too. 
Um, so usually I try to steer away from using any modern heathen art in any of my blogs. I either try to use like photographs that sort of represent the concept or um, art that is from different historical retellings of the lore that is past the copyright if it ever had one. Um, but every once in a while I have a blog entry where I find it difficult to find something that fits. So recently I've been trying to create some of my images using the AI on crayon.com, typing in like descriptors of what I want for a picture and seeing what the AI comes up with. Um, this is just to get around the copyright um, infringement because Crayon has a policy that as long as you're under a certain amount of money that you're making then you can use their images as long as you credit them. Um, so that's a way that I've been getting around it. My most recent blog before this one I was talking about Winter Nights and I could not find any images really for winter nights. I mean I could just put a bonfire but there's really nothing online that is even like images uh, like that photography that people have taken during winter nights. There's barely anything. Um, so I was trying to create a winter nights image and because of what I've been talking about in this particular um, in this particular blog I had uh, been talking about Freyr and I'd also been talking about sacrificing cattle etc. So some of the descriptors that I put into the AI, the AI generator for Winter Nights, first I put Winter Nights and then I put that it was a festival, um, a heathen festival, and then I put that I wanted an image of the god Freyr and I used God so that it would know that it was a deity and I also put that I wanted images of cattle. Now the image that it came up with here is it looks more like Freya and maybe an elephant and a triceratops. I assume they were trying to make cattle but that's not what it looks like. So. I ended up trying to find another image online that would sort of fit because the AI just wasn't coming up with anything and for those of you who haven't used Crayon before it always gives you nine images to choose from so the reason why I'm saying this image is Freya not Freyr is some of the other images it was the same with the green dress but it was more obvious that it was an apron dress with the tortoise brooches um, so clearly a goddess and not a god. Um, but this is the challenge with using the AI is even though I put god and then Freyr it came up with this image that was not Freyr. Um, so yeah that's some of the challenges that I face and it always has me thinking in the back of my head like why aren't there images of our other holidays other than Yule? Um, why aren't there images of more complex um, concepts such as weird, frith, example, like things that are central to heathenry. I know it's harder to depict them just like it's harder to depict Orlog but it can be done and then I'm wondering is are people creating these images and just not sharing them? Would people buy them if someone did create them? Is there a market for them? Um, what is inhibiting these particular types of images from being created? So those are the things that I've been thinking about uh, mostly when I was discussing this and yeah just I would love to hear your guys's comments as well you can share them here on YouTube 
um, or on my Instagram or Facebook. I don't have comments turned on on my blog because I get some weird comments and I try to steer them onto my social media just so that it's a little bit easier for moderation. Yeah, so let me know what you think about this and I hope to see you next time.